edition of the Goa Arts and Literature Festival here at the International Center Goa in Donapama. Today we have a very famous personality amongst us. Mr. Srivats Nevatiya is an independent journalist and the author of the book, How to Travel Light, My Memories of Madness and Melancholia. A warm welcome, sir, and it's such an honor to meet you. Thank you. May I start by asking you, you have worked as a journalist at Hindustan Times, Outlook, and Mumbai Mirror. Why did you want to venture out as an independent journalist? Um, the, the real reason as to why I took on independent journalism, um, the, the story is twofold. The first uh, most honest answer is that when I have worked uh, professionally, um, there have been occasions where my bipolarity has interrupted my, my time in an office. Um, it has left me unable to, uh, to continue work because I needed a long stretch of time off to recover from either an attack of mania or depression. Um, so uh, these problems have cropped up uh, in, in the past. Uh, bipolarity is something that is typically hard uh, to understand. Uh, and it's not a condition, as you know, that can be cured, but it's a condition that needs to be managed. Uh, so perhaps after a very long time, I can say that I manage it better today. Uh, but a few months ago, uh, I was working for National Geographic Traveling, uh, and I decided at one moment that perhaps the best thing to do would be to switch to freelance, which would give me more time and more freedom, uh, and I would be able to work on stories that I wanted to, uh, and also write, which I was not uh, really getting a chance to do in these jobs. Um, so yes, so, so two. One, that my bipolarity essentially disallowed me from time to time uh, to work with organizations, and two, I wanted more freedom to write. Isn't it more risky as an independent journalist than if you were affiliated to a publication? It is. It is hard. Uh, people don't pay you on time. Uh, it takes. It's very taxing to chase checks and uh, payments um, but it's also very rewarding uh, on, on the, at the same level because you're able to at least I'm able to write on a variety of subjects uh, and I wouldn't be able to otherwise so with regards to censorship well you know I mean that's uh, you can write without any censorship but whether or not the publication okay. chooses to censor your writing is entirely up to the publication yeah. so it's not like you're free of censorship uh, but you're definitely free of things like office meetings and uh, you know people breathing down your neck. Uh, yeah. That doesn't happen so much with freelancing and working independently. In your book, How to Travel Light, My Memories of Madness and Melancholy, you mentioned there that lithium therapy and kindness of family and friends had helped you arrive at a point where you could think without interruption. Do you feel that kindness of a family plays an important role in making a child aware of their mental health issue? Sure. Um, look, the awareness is something that um, it takes It takes a while to arrive at, uh, as I think I've tried to write about. Uh, that for the longest time, you and your support system are always grappling with something new because um, there's there's nothing formulaic about your illness. Uh, mm -hmm. There's nothing cliched about it, um, and you are almost waiting for it to become a cliche so that people respond to it better. Uh, the, the symptoms, more or less, remain the same. It's the manifestations that change uh, over time. Uh, family is terribly important because um, not just because they pay bills for your medicines or hospitalization or, or something like that uh, but also because they 
their generosity, their magnanimity uh, defines how you fare. Um, so emotional support. Emotional support. Um, if, if I did not get that kind of emotional support from my parents or from my loved ones or from my friends, uh, I would not be able to be sitting here today uh, talking to you because uh, it's only their help that brings me back on my feet each time that something goes wrong. After 10 years of being diagnosed with bipolar disorder, you no longer felt a victim of affliction, but instead you saw beauty you never thought could exist. Do you truly feel free now? I don't think any of us ever totally feel free, right? Because, I mean, that is, I, I guess, the goal uh, that one always gives oneself uh, when one is uh, kind of growing up and when one is living, that of total freedom. Uh, do, do I feel free? I, certainly there are moments when I do, uh, but altogether, perhaps not, because, because I think that's, that's very hard to kind of yeah. come by that feeling of total freedom. Um, religion does a great job of explaining it. Uh, I mean, something like Buddhism will probably call that total freedom. Nirvana, Hinduism will call it moksha. Uh, I'm very far away from such things. I'm not even sure if they exist uh, in the, the modern day. But, you know, yeah, I, in today's society, it's very difficult. Yes, yes. Uh, also probably not feasible. What would you do yeah. after you like that, uh, exactly. this daily life, and I might as well be a bit uh, embittered um, through daily life than above it all. I guess. Walter once said, "Writing is the painting of the voice." What does writing mean to you? Uh, writing for me means everything. It's the only thing that I can do. It's the only thing that I can do well. Well, again, well is subjective, but it's the only thing I, I feel I can do well. Um, I, it helps me express uh, what's going on in my mind more than that it helps me give order to my mind um, it, it helps me um, be able to witness the world in, in a manner that is, um, that is usually more novel than living uh, or experiencing it's the writing of it that promotes a certain sense of degree of creativity it's frustrating as well because there are days when you cannot write uh, and you yeah. feel as if it's the end of the world or at least the end of your life as you knew it uh, because it matters so much. Um, but in short, writing for me is everything. It's, it's, it's what matters the most. Was there any particular statement you read or that someone said in your life that made an impact and completely changed your life? Uh, any one statement? Any one statement. One person? It would probably be... So I have I just been released from an institution, um, a mental health institution, and that was in Bombay. Uh, and I was going back to Calcutta uh, with my mother uh, on, on a flight. And my mother suddenly, uh, while we were kind of mid-air, she turns around and she says, you know, Shivats, this is hard for me. I'm getting old. Um, that one statement probably has mattered a lot. Um, it has certainly made me more aware of um, where I might have been going wrong. Uh, it has made me more aware of mortality. Uh, it has made me more aware of the place that my parents hold in my life and the kind of place that I might hold in theirs. Um, I feel like walking the straight and narrow uh, after I think about that or after hearing that. Um, so yeah, I, I, I would say that it was that one statement, uh, I'm growing old, that would probably be the most wow. momentous. At the end of your book, you say that a therapist asks you, what do you want most with your life? And you say that your answer remains the same. Could you elaborate? See, I mean, I think what I want most in my life is to is to be able to be kind. 
um, that's important. Um, to be able to put myself, not, not just put myself in other people's shoes, but try and understand as to how they might be tying their laces and try and, try and imitate or copy that. Uh, or at least learn that, learn it their way. Um, it's very important for me to write. Um, that's perhaps what I might have told my therapist. Uh, the most important thing for me to do is to be able to write in a manner that people might be affected, people might feel something or think something that they haven't thought before. Um, it's also to look after myself. That's, that's something new uh, since the book came out. Uh, and investing a lot of time in just being kind to myself yeah. uh, or trying to be. So, could you sum up your experience at CAF in a few words? It has been intimate, marvelous, uh, and uh, altogether eye-opening. Uh, some of the conversations that I've had, uh, what I've heard people say here, um, it's it's all uh, so poignant. It's it's all so important. Uh, some of it is very brief. I feel. Um, it's, it's a great bunch of writers, it's a great bunch of uh, thinkers, people who, who make a difference as far as public opinion is concerned, uh, or as far as um, literary trends go. Um, I, I feel that Goa is, is a great place uh, for all of us to come to. Um, just, the, just that you were talking about freedom a little while earlier, so uh, there's almost a sense of freedom. Uh, in, in Goa, which translates into how easygoing people are, uh, even guests who come to this festival. Um, it's the only festival where I've seen uh, that speakers can actually come in shops. Uh, I've not seen that anywhere. Uh, so it's, it's, it's quite lovely to be here. Uh, it's not just from the point of view of somebody who's visiting as a writer, but also as a listener, as a participant, uh, as a member of the audience. Uh, the quality of conversation uh, is super. Uh, and uh, I, I hope I get to come here uh, in kind of more years to come. I'll have to write more books for that. Yes. Uh, but I do hope to be here again. Thank you, sir, so much for your time. Thank you. So that was Mr. Shri Vats Nevatiya at the Goa Arts and Literature Festival at the International Center Goa. Stay tuned for more updates.